Hey guys. Today I'm going to be discussing the topic of chromatic glissandos. I learned, I started working on this technique too not so long ago. The only piece that I've actually played this in is Vitali Chacon, so I'm going to be using that as an example. It might be a little bit different though because the chromatic glissando that appears in that piece is with octaves, so. But the procedure of practicing it is exactly the same. I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I practice my chromatic glissandos in order to execute it cleanly and nicely. I think I'm going to insert a clip of me playing the chromatic glissando in regular tempo, <laughs> in concert tempo. <laughs> And then I'm going to be telling you guys step by step how I got to that place. The first thing you want to do is to check your intonation, especially in this case because it's octaves. So I like to practice each and every single note out of tempo, it's okay, just to check your intonation with separate bows. While you're doing that, fix any of the notes that are out of tune. And I also like to vibrato when I'm doing these kinds of intonation practices, especially in this case, because for chromatic glissando, since you're shifting around so much, it's important to have your wrist loose and your hand frame really loose too. Like you don't want a tight grip of the neck of the violin. So I like to vibrato in order to keep my wrist and hand frame really loose. Once you've repeated that many times, the next step that I like to do is gliss from the top note to the bottom note without like worrying about any of the notes in between, just to get a sense of rhythm and also of where you need to start and where you need to stop sliding. So you get a sense of distance. <laughs> Doing that glissando movement helps with the sense of distance, but it also reinforces the idea of having your hand frame and your wrist loose during that, during that movement. The concept behind this is the idea that the top note and the lowest note, like basically the starting point and the finishing note, are the most important components of a chromatic glissando. That's because you have to start at like a specific place and then you have to finish at a specific note. And if you miss any of those notes, it's, it's going to fail. Like those are the critical points of the chromatic glissando. Anything in between that, to be honest, it's okay if you miss a couple of notes because how can, how can you possibly hit all of those notes in such a short period of time? But the thing is that we have to try to hit all of those notes is the thing, but the two notes that you absolutely have to hit are the starting note and this and the finishing note. And that exercise helps you to reinforce those ideas and practice that. The next exercise is the one that gets you the closest to actually executing the chromatic glissando and it's doing the chromatic glissando except it's in slow motion. What you want to do with this one is you want to keep it below concert tempo, but you want to keep all the rhythms. Something that happens really often is that when practicing chromatic glissandos, people tend to take too much time on the chromatic glissandos and they tend to not respect the rhythm that's actually written in the piece. So you want to avoid doing that. While you're doing this exercise, one thing you want to keep in mind and 
do consciously is bring up the tempo as you get used to the chromatic glissando. So end result will be a combination of the first step and the second step. Once you're at tempo, it's going to be less of shifting for every single note and more of a glissando. Those are my three steps in achieving a good chromatic glissando. I'm not sure if this would have helped anyone, but that's those were the steps that got me into achieving a good chromatic glissando. To be honest, it's a really difficult technique for me even now, but with practice, you will improve. I think for this specific technique and a lot of other techniques, repetition is key. This was my second technique video. I honestly feel nervous every time I upload these kinds of videos because I personally I personally feel like it's out of place for me to talk about these things and like instruct people on how to do things but I guess I'm just trying to help anyone out there who needs help. So, yeah, I don't I just am scared of misinforming people, but I know these tips have personally helped for me and they probably will help someone out there. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.